Welcome one and all. I'm John Zadar, your host. This is 6622. It is a Monday and you're watching On Top and Hot, where I like to share OTC and penny stocks that I come across through the day as I'm day trading. And I've got some for you today. I saw a few in the news that definitely caught my eye and I saw some on the radars of investors. And I'm going to share them all with you right now. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at those three stocks that had new information come out today. Sometimes new information comes via a press release or a filing or just Twitter, wherever you get your information. Now we are looking at the Twitter account of Central Electric Group, ticker C-E-N-N. -N. Now this is on the NASDAQ. It is not on the OTC, but it is a penny stock. Any stock under five bucks does qualify as a penny stock regardless what market it's on. And CENN finished today at $2.11 with just over 22% gains. Now this is a company that makes electric vehicles, not just these small guys here. Lately they've been getting into these electric commercial vans. But today, about six hours ago, they came out with a tweet. Central's presence in the preliminary list of additions to the Russell 3000 index is another important milestone that is a result of the considerable growth over the past year. So what they're telling us here is that they have not uplisted to the Russell 3000. In case that's what you read, they've been added to the preliminary list, which is good. It got the stock to rise. But what do you think will happen if they do get accepted? Right, there's gonna be a bigger jump. So now we have a forewarning to keep an eye on this stock because there could be a big jump if they actually get accepted onto the Russell 3000. That is ticker C-E-N-N. -N. Let's take a look at the next one I got. Now this next company, they had news come out today, RMSL, REM Sleep Holdings. They devise, create, and patent devices that help a person sleep and to breathe properly as they're sleeping. They finished the day at 0 .0181 and had a 50% drop. Folks, that's why I'm showing it to you. I think this is a buying opportunity. I think this is an overreaction. Now I agree, that's a cheap price. 50% of this means it was at what? Uh, three and a half cents roughly. But that is still a 50% drop that can be gained back when it goes back to where it belongs. This drop is based on this news being bad news? Well, yeah, it starts off as bad, but it finishes off good. And I don't think everybody read it through properly, but I may be wrong, you tell me. On Friday the 27th of May, we were informed by the FDA after months of waiting, the Delta Wave, their newest patented product, will be reclassified under the 510K review as an implantable device. So consequently, additional testing is now required under this new classification. So this is kind of like standing in a real long line and finally getting your turn at the window and the guy at the window says, I'm sorry, but you're in the wrong line. You'll have to go in that line gets people frustrated and upset. But wait a minute, before you run away, read the rest of this with me. Management was advised to withdraw the current 510K application and resubmit after the new testing parameters have been satisfied. I know, not sounding better yet, but wait. REM sleep is presently engaging. The professional is perfectly suited to perform all new testing requirements and will fast track this new requirement to submit the new 510K without delay. REM sleep has written acknowledgement from the FDA reviewer that all the testing submitted to date will still be applicable to the new 510k submission. Not as bad as everyone thinks. We just have a few extra tests we got to throw in there. We don't have to redo it all. But from their own mouth, frankly, REM sleep is in a stronger position because in previous submissions, we were not provided with definitive guidelines. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that entails, but what I am sure of is that didn't sound like bad news. It just sounds like a simple delay. That's all, a delay, and they're going to be back on track. And when FDA approves something, it is a big deal, and you can normally see that reflected in the price. So I think that will be an easy 50% to get back if you got in around this price. But hey, do your own DD, RMSO. Last one.
And the last stock in the news is Humanity Therapeutics. This is ticker YMTX. This is another penny stock on the NASDAQ. Finished today just under $2 with over 40% gains. On this news here, Humanity Therapeutics announces definitive agreements for two strategic transactions. Now, there's a lot of information here. I'm not going to go through it all, but there's a couple highlighted areas that are really interesting to me. Humanity Therapeutics a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on the discovery and development of innovative disease modifying therapies for neurodegenerative diseases today announces it has entered into definitive agreements for two transactions one the first definitive agreement is an asset purchase agreement for the sale of humanity's lead clinical stage product candidate as well as humanity's unpartnered discovery stage neuroscience product candidates they are selling these to Janssen Pharmaceuticals, which is the subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson, right? They are selling this for $26 million in cash. But check this out. Humanity plans to distribute any remaining available cash proceeds from the sale to Humanity stockholders via a one-time dividend. Now, I don't know how much money there's going to be left over after purchasing it. I'm not quite sure how that works. But the fact that they're telling their shareholders, we got free money to give you. Uh, yeah, you've got my attention. Then the second agreement, under the second definitive agreement, Kanita will become a wholly owned subsidiary of Humanity in an all stock transaction, resulting in a combined publicly traded company renamed Kanita Inc. that will focus on immuno oncology and continue Humanity's ongoing research collaboration with Merrick and Company. Isn't that another big name? So you've got Humanity working in collaboration with Merrick. They've just made a deal with Janssen Pharmaceutical, which is part of Johnson & Johnson's for $26 million cash, and they're going to give the leftover cash to their shareholders. Aren't you glad I share this stuff with you? This is Humanity, folks. And you may want to remember one other detail. It's got a low float. I'm not quite sure what it is, but outstanding shares is just over 10 million, under 11 million. So whatever the float is, it's less than that. All right, I've got three stocks that were on my radar. I think they're on other people's radar as well. Let me show you what I got. And of course, we are back here to the otcmarkets.com website because this is my go-to site whenever I want information on an OTC stock. This is updated every day by FINRA and the SEC, so why waste my time doing searches when I know where current information is located? So the stock we're looking at is on the OTC market. This is Max Sound Corporation, ticker MAXD. Finished a day at a mwah, primo price, folks. It doesn't get any better than this. 0 0.001. Now think about this, folks. There's only one more digit they can put behind that one. And like an odometer, all it has to do is go from zero to nine and bink, that goes to two. And that is the smallest movement on the charts. That is virtually the smallest movement you're going to get. And when that hits two, you've doubled your money. When it gets up to a five, which isn't very far, double zero five is not very far from double zero one. That's 500% gains, folks. This is a perfect buy-in price. It's my favorite. She did have a down day today. She was down 16%, which is a little interesting because she is being buzzed about all over the internet. Really is a lot of talk. She's on the pink tier. She's current, but that's about all I can see. We have no verified profile. We have no verified transfer agent, and I don't know why. Now, I haven't seen any other red flags, so I don't know what's going on. I would like to see those there, but they're not there. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us here that Max Sound Corporation is acclaimed for their Max D HD Audio Max Sound that can provide a better solution for audio video data transmissions. They are moving high definition sound through transmissions and they do it better than anybody so it seems there was a lot of talk today about it what was the relative volume even though she fell pretty high she normally does 38 million shares a day today she did 201 million you're talking six times as much and she's getting up to a quarter billion shares now what is the share structure on max sound 
Oh boy, maximum is what we got here. 6.3 billion shares. They really need to do a share cut, not a reverse split. They just need to wipe out some of those shares. What are their financials? They got anything coming in? Well, they do. As the end of last year, they had just over a quarter million dollars. We got to take those three zeros, put those behind there. And what's most impressive here is look, cost of revenue, nothing. They got to keep every penny because they're selling a technology, not a product. It's a way to do something, not a thing to do it with. So it doesn't cost them anything to show people how to do it. And they're making money doing that. We got anything on a fresher quarterly? No. No, we got nothing more there. Any disclosures we can see over here? Uh, their latest 10Q. If you really want to know more about this company when you're done watching this video, come on over and open this up. This is their quarterly financial report. It'll tell you everything, including the bad. That's right. They even cover the things they're worried about in there. So there's lots of information there. And that's about it here. So we jump on over to their news which is really where the story should begin, except they have no new news here. You can see it's 2016. That's a ways back. So this had to be found online, and this is what I found. First time I saw this article was actually in a Google search, and it was all in Japanese. The only thing I saw was Max D in the English in the middle of all the Japanese, and they asked me if I wanted to translate it. Now, I couldn't find a lot of information, so I said, yeah, go ahead and translate it for me. Voila, I'm glad I did. This is a huge deal all about MaxD, about a lot of companies over in Japan that are gonna use their products and sell them and use them for all of their own products. Remember, they've got a technology to move sound. So they tell us here that, uh, well, you can't read that, I can't read that. I had to translate that, Muffip. I thought Muffip was close. I did a search, it turns out to be Mafip. M-A-F-I-P, that's actually the name of the website, which we're gonna see here in just a second. But in this news, it says that MAFIP announces that MacSound Core has entered into a joint venture agreement with MAFIP to promote patented MaxD biometric audio security with the MaxD HD audio trademark, high-speed video and data transmission technology in a conglomerate agreement. And this is with all these different companies and they call this the new franchise brand series of Tokyo, Japan. Now, I found the site right there, mafip.org, and this is the new franchise brand series. Now, I can't read it all and I'm not quite sure what it all means, but there's a lot of big names here and Max D is mentioned repeatedly. You got the Rakuten Group and Yes24, Google, Amazon, Walmart, and eBay. Not sure why they're there. There's Max Sound for the first time. Sony Pictures Entertainment, Sony Group, Premier Tech Brand, Leading Online Advertising Services. Here we go again. Sony Group, Rakuten, Max D, and one more time, Max D right there in Rakuten Group. So, MACD is definitely the center of all that is going on here. All these companies have products that they want to use the MACD HD sound quality transmission with. They want to use it on their cartoons, live action films, audiobooks, games, mobile devices, streaming music, CDs, DVDs, TV, like everything. So this is a huge deal that is going on over in Japan. Just not a lot of information here about it. Now there is more information, but this is found over at Twitter and this is different and unique. So we're getting this information right from the company's new Twitter account. They got this about four days ago. Here on June 2nd, this is the new official Twitter page of the company. It is named Max D Invest, for those of you who are interested. The next post he gave us the next day, over the past year, we've been working on a new technology we have trade secrets on. We use this technology to enter the mining sector. You heard me right, mining. Yeah, we're talking about digging in the ground, not Bitcoin. We're talking about getting minerals out of the earth. From what I gather, they aren't stopping with their HD transmission. They're just adding to their revenue streams by 
doing mine with their new secret technology. And they said, starting Monday, we will reveal more on these projects. Well, that was today, and they kept their word. We had two posts come out today. The first one here says, recently the company signed an agreement with Nacho in Mexico for Max D's in the ground asset project. This partnership contains a 50-50 split of after-tax profits on jointly funded mining of lithium, rudium, and more. But wait, this next post is a little bit hard to handle. The estimated resources of precious metals and minerals in high demand represented on the list below is above $1 trillion. $1 trillion. Max D plans to use its secret technology and relationships to fund, harvest, and sell and deliver those assets in those grounds. So there's your list. They tell you how many millions of tons there is of each one of these. A trillion dollars, and they say they get 50% after taxes, but roughly a half a billion dollars is theirs. So yeah, I'm expecting something to come of this like maybe another news press to give us more insight just on that. So they got a lot of deals going on in Japan. We're not quite sure how big and massive that is, but obviously they're going to get revenues from it. And then you got this, which sounds pretty bloody massive to me. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what it's telling us. We're going to be doing our charting on a free trading platform. This is Thinkorswim. If you like it, just go on over to TD Ameritrade. Sign up for a free trading account. Keep your account open. That's all you really got to do. Keep it open and you can use this just like I do. So we are looking at MAXD, MAXD, six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here six months ago of almost 002 and a low here of about 10 days ago of 0004. That's a 500% difference there. She's been under the 200 most of the time, had a wicked surge here. This was on March 18th or 20th. And I ain't got a clue why it jumped, folks. Their news, it ended in 2016, so I would actually have to go do some DD. And she fell down to that low bubble and has launched herself. Now, before I leave here, I do want to draw a line at the top of that surge and the bottom of that surge. And I want to find the middle roughly. I'm just going to spitball here because I think that is going to become a resistance as this climbs up. I think that will be important. So we'll be looking for that one and this one right there and that one right there. Those are all resistances and supports as she's climbing up the ladder. And let's see, she has been climbing up that ladder for one, two, three, four, four days, and today she fell off, which is kind of interesting because today is the day they brought out the tweets about what they were actually doing. We've been talking about this for a while and didn't know exactly what was up. Now we do, and it fell. So it's a little interesting, and it is bringing down the technicals. Let's look at that 20-day, one-hour view. So she wasn't doing much of anything until four days ago when she jumped from triple zero five up to double zero one. That gives you a hundred percent gains right there. And she's holding them. She's definitely above the 50% mark on here. Volume is picking up. You can see it was just a trickle here. We had some bigger spikes. Now we're getting bigger, bigger spikes, more bigger spikes. So it is building up. Technicals, again, very weak. Today was a sideways, downhill sort of day. So there was yesterday. We had a little bit of climb, not as much as the days before. And today, we had a drop. And she has fallen and is sitting right on top of the 200, which has just now come into the picture in the last few days. And I normally notice that the price will play to the biggest SMA on the board. Well, the 50 was the only one here. So it was playing to that 50. You can see it was sucked up to that 50 big time. But now that it sees the 200 and it even got close to the 200, it moved to the 200. Now with everything going on, I think this is going to bounce. I'm invested in it, folks. I am. I got into this right at this price, right at the double zero one. I think it's a great price. I love it. Technicals are showing a crossover right there just touching the signal line. This is all power moves. 
things are getting bigger and stronger. The RSI is a little tempted right now. We're at 54. You want to be a minimum of 60, but you would like it to be up here at 70 in red and on fire. CCI, our commodity channel index, this compares the price now to the prices behind it, and it shows you a lot of strength. If it's near the red, it's bad. If it's near yellow, it's neutral. If it's getting near green, it's getting good. And whatever direction it's pointing, up is good, down is bad. So it's actually in a pretty decent position. To me, it looks like it's getting ready to launch. I can't guarantee anything, folks, but it looks like it wants to bounce off that 200, get on top of the 50, and start to rumble. So we get the buzz continuing online the way we are, I'm sure we'll see some more growth. And the company is progressing. They do have a lot of things going on. Let's face it, $1 trillion? $1 trillion? That sounds exaggerated to me. So I'll be really expecting some more information about that. Because if that turns out to be true, God knows what this stock might do. All right, let's go take a look at the next one I got. So here's another stock that has no news out, just tweets. But it seems tweets are getting a lot more attention than the news presses are. This is NXMR, Nexmart Inc. Finished today just under four cents at 0 .037, just over 17% gains. She's on the pink tier and current. And hey, look here, ta-da! We got our verified profile and our transfer agent, so they look good. So this is a oil field service company. Rather than working with the oil, they work with all the peripheral jobs, whether it be hauling water in and out, removing mud, and whatever else they do, which I'm not familiar with. But that's what they do. Now, as I said, there's no news today, but there was some interesting tweets. So what was the relative volume around those tweets? Well, she normally does just under a million shares. Today, she did 5.7 million shares. So there was a jump up. And considering that we only did 5.4 billion shares for the entire OTC market today, that's not bad. $1.7 billion. We normally do over $2 billion. So things are still in a depressed mode, folks. What is the share structure on this company? Oh, this isn't bad. I mean, it's not great, but that ain't bad. 83 million, you can normally check the unrestricted shares. That'll be as close as you need to get to the float. 83 million. Financials, what do we got here? Urba. Uh, nothing. See, I didn't feel that that was accurate. See, we got nothing showing anywhere here. I jumped into the most current financial, and this is it right here. You can see income for the three months ended, March 31st, 2022, was $1.5 million with a gross profit of just under a million dollars. And it says that they're holding uh, 341,000 in assets. So the truth of the matter is they do have some revenues. They do have some income. Not quite sure exactly how they're going about getting it, but they're probably doing it with their oil field services, right? And what about disclosures? We got anything over there? Well, they're current on their financials, and we got no new SEC filing. So let's just jump on over to the news. Oh, I hate when it does that. Secret here, folks. Don't touch the center or you get that. You got to come around the edges. A little tip from the wizard. This is the safe zone on the edges. All right, news. Most current piece of news we have is back here in March of this year. Uh, they lowered the authorized stock by almost a billion shares. Yeah, they kicked off a whole bunch of shares, which wasn't a bad thing, but there's nothing new here. So that's when we jump over here to the actual Twitter account of the company. Best information you're going to get. On May 23rd, they tell us that two new companies reviewing LOIs, major news coming, and share cancellation being reviewed by lawyers. And the share cancellations occurred. Then, June 2nd, few delays on signing deals. We'll have everything completed by tomorrow. We'll update all shareholders next week on new business and new lines of revenue. Well, that's now. And today, seven hours ago, we got another one. First deal is signed completely and we'll announce this week. Working on closing the other two this week to announce next week. You know what I think? I think he's milking the news. I think he's trying to keep people investing in it. All right. He's told us that he was going to make a deal and he was delaying. 
Now he says he's made the deal. Yay! But who with? We don't know yet. He's going to tell us later on this week. And they're closing another deal. He won't tell us who, but that's next week. Boy, this guy probably works on a dairy farm. But whatever works, keep the news pumping, keep the people wanting more. That's what works, right? All right, let's go see what that chart looks like. So that is a six-month, four-hour chart for NXMR. Lots of activity right in here. Look at that volume. It is strong and with cause. This is in January. If you look at the very first piece of news, which is the bottom piece on the OTC markets when we were looking at it, that is when they entered the cryptocurrency market. Don't know exactly what it was about, but people were excited about it. Then this big rush here is when they acquired their oil service business. They've just been doing it recently, and they had a lot of attention for it. And the third one is for their share reduction. So you can see when they have news, there is response to it. They have been above the 200 all this time. Now, they haven't had any news since March, and here it is April. Without news, people fall away. You can see it. And here's our tweet. And our tweet shows volume that is now relatively comparable to the levels back here. Not here. Without news, you just don't have the activity on this stock. So there's a lot of people that read the news on NXMR. And we can see she was under everything here and has now gotten on top of the 50 looking pretty good. The technicals are looking really warm and starting to get hot. Let's look at that 20 day one hour view. Oh, that's pretty. All right, so she's been running down here at a low price. Pretty much looks like she's going sideways the hard way, riding on the 50, but the 200 is coming down like an eagle, barreling down to that mouse in the field. And once it got close enough, it launched off that 50. You can see it had determination to be on the 200. It actually wanted to be there. Technicals still are warm, but not yet hot. Let's look at that five day, five minute. All right, we just have the 200 coming into the picture right now. We can see she was sitting just around the 50 here, is now starting to fight the 200 and is pulling away. So once the 200 came into the picture, I can see the game changed here. It definitely changed. We had our MACD come above the signal line here and has stayed above the signal line. Almost broke it right there, folks, as it was coming down through the 50. That is the yellow line there, 50-day SMA. It bounced off that, tried to break it again. So this 50-day SMA is what it is paying heed to. If it breaks this, most likely it's going to come all the way back down to here. Though, the technicals, we got a crossover sitting on the signal line looking like she wants to take another run at it. The other two, not so strong. But, again... All this company, in my opinion, needs is a PR. They need to get some news out there. Forget those tweets. The tweets are great for keeping the buzz going. I mean, you know, I see there's activity here. He is tweeting. It is working. But I think the press releases give a lot more volume. And I think that volume will get this price to jump a lot higher. So watch for the next NXMR PR. That may be the real nitro to get this stock to move. Last stock we're looking at is ticker INND, Interscope Hearing Technologies. Finished the day at 00425, just under 9% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those precious green ticks we're always looking for, so she looks really good. Now, in a nutshell, this is a hearing aid company, but they're a fancy dancy company. They're working with AI and all sorts of stuff, and their products are going through big box stores. And today, they had a big deal that they talked about. So what was the relative volume around this company? Ooh, it's not my dyslexia. We went from 17 million to 71 million. Looks really good. I love all those sevens. Those look pretty. What is the share structure on this company? Oh, oh, God. Not only is it big, but I see a lot of sixes here. Oh, how far we have fallen. We have 6.1 billion shares in the float. Not too great, folks. How about those finances? How are they doing? Not bad. 
a little erratic through the COVID period, but they finished last year at $695,000, cost them $200,000. They got to keep almost a half a million. Um, that is at the end of last year. What about a recent quarterly report? Nothing there. Let me take a look over at the disclosures, see if we have a recent disclosure that isn't up yet. Oh yeah, right there, 516. So there's the most recent quarterly report if you're interested to see what they've done in the last three months and not at just at the end of last year. Any 8Ks down here? Yes. Yes, there is an 8K and I do want to show this one to you, but not quite yet. I want to jump on over to the news first. Now they got a lot of news, but if we scroll on down here, I can show you that it was in October of last year, they acquired I Hear Medical. This is also the same time that they were getting hearing assist. But what was a big deal with hearing assist was their contract. They had a contract with Walmart. Highlights of hearing assist, well, they sell over 500,000 hearing aids. They have nearly 400,000 customers. They're sold in 757 Walmart stores and on walmart.com, and they generated 72 million in top line revenue. So not only are they making good money, but they have some big contracts. And to be honest, that's what it was in that 8K, a new contract with Walmart. On April 28, 2022, Interscope Hearing Technologies receives a purchase order from Walmart USA in the amount of $9.4 million for hearing assist products. The purchase order is for in-store purchases of four new hearing assist models, launching in 1,499 Walmart Vision Centers. They've doubled the number of Walmart stores they're in now, and that is a huge order, and obviously Walmart's is still happy with them because they're continuing their business. So, what do you think the chart looks like, and what do you think it might look like tomorrow? Well, we won't know until we look at it today. Let's go see. Naturally, we're looking at a six-month, four-hour chart. This is IND. This is October. All that volume is for the two businesses that they acquired. They went from, uh, let's call it 9 to 24, so about 250% gains there. Held it for a little while and then gave it all away. Sat on the 200, fell away from the 200, has come all the way down to a low of double zero two. So that's a thousand, that's more than a thousand percent fall. And right now she is working her way back up. She was under everything. You can see the price bars are under the blue 10. She got up on top of the 50 and is now working her way up to that 200 on the four hour. Lots of volume coming in right now and the technicals are looking really good, nice and primed. 20 day, one hour. So she's working sideways with a little bit of dip, waiting for that 200. She got on top of the 50 once the 200 got close, just like that last one, and jumped. Got on top of that 200 and is now launching off of the 20. Doesn't even care about the 200. Did have a pullback after this high bubble at the end of the day. Technicals are pulling back a wee bit right now. Let's look at that five day, five minute. So we had a huge jump here, one, two, four days ago, sideways, 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 and another jump. But she virtually, virtually was trying to give away all of her gains for today. She had a jump from, uh, let's call it 37 up to 48. So about 30% gain. She finished the day at uh, roughly 9%. Had a large fall. Volume is definitely there today, but you can see the technicals of all giving up the ghost. They're all heading straight for the grave right now. So do I think we're going to get anything more out of this? Well, there wasn't a press release, and I know that not everybody reads 8Ks. So if they come out with the press release, maybe. But you did read that that was from April and we are in June. Why did it take so long to get that 8K out? I'm not really sure. However, this is a solid company doing real business. One of those companies they've got was doing $72 million before this company got a hold of it. So it's not like this company is in any jeopardy. They should just continue growing and growing. And if you go back to the OTC markets and read their description, you'll see a list of a lot of stores that they're selling their products in. So INND has a future as long as people keep losing their hearing. And Walmart's is the easiest place to get their products. So did you see anything you like there? 
It was really hard pickings today. When I went through my favorite OTC page that shows me trades, the stocks getting the most trades today were mining companies. The mining companies were getting all the activity. It wasn't humongous, but of all the stocks on the OTC market, mining companies were doing very well today. And to be honest, folks, I don't normally like to cover mining companies because most of their lingo is above my head. I can barely read it, let alone understand it. Every now and then I'll cover one, but normally not. But there's a lot going on out there, folks. There's a lot of stocks that have news, but a lot of the information is coming through tweets. So don't ignore Twitter. There's lots of information out there. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.